Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. All right, everyone, it is time to play the next round of the My Bad TBR game to determine what I will be reading in April. Now, this could get a little bit complicated because as y'all probably already know, April 1st starts Slayer Fest, which is my Buffy the Vampire Slayer themed readathon. And I'm going to be participating in the quarter long version. So it's going to run from April 1st through June 30th. And I'm going to try to double up on as few prompts as possible. So there are 40 prompts overall, and I'm going to try to get as close to 40 books as I possibly can, which is quite a feat if you think about it, because that means I need to read about 13 books every single month in order to make that happen. And I don't even know if I consistently read 13 books every month. So I'm going to have a whole different video specifically for all the books that I plan to read for the Slayer Fest TBR. And then I'm still doing this. And of course, I'm going to try to see if any of the challenges that I pull and any of the prompts that I land on during my TBR game can actually satisfy those Slayer Fest prompts as well. But another complication comes along with the fact that in the Slayer Fest readathon, for the big bad portion of that, those have to be read in order. So I also have to consider when I will possibly be satisfying the prompts for those big bads. It's all very, very complicated and convoluted, but I have like everything written out and planned out. So we're gonna see what I can do. But before we get into April's TBR, let's go ahead and see how I did with Marches. All right, so the first challenge that I drew for myself in March was to read Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. That is actually the final book on my March TBR that I have to read, so I have not read it and I have not started it yet. However, I do believe that I will be able to. At the time of filming, it is only March 25th, so I have around a week to go, and I definitely think that I can satisfy that final prompt to finish off my March TBR, so we're in good shape there. The next challenge that I pulled was to read Missing Pieces by Heather Gutenkopf, which I have started and finished finished. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.5 stars and you will be able to see my full review on this coming up in the recent reads video that I will be posting shortly. The third challenge that I pulled was to read a John Mars and I had the passengers already on my shelves. So this is what I read. I really, really enjoyed this and I gave it a four stars. And again, this is going to be coming up in the recent reads video that I will be posting soon. Getting into the prompts that I actually drew for my TBR game. My first draw landed me on the prompt to read a mood read. And for that, I selected What Lies in the Woods by K. Alice Marshall. Again, another one one that I really enjoyed. This was such a solid suspense thriller. I did include this in my last recent reads wrap up. However, I'm going to be doing a vlog series that's going to be including specific types of books. This is one of them. And so I'm doing my in-depth review in that vlog. So the recent reads wrap up only kind of has a synopsis of what it is about and my overall enjoyment level of the story. And you will be able to hear my more in-depth thoughts when the vlog is actually posted, but that's not going to be for quite a while, my friends. So just hang tight and be very, very patient. You will eventually know my full thoughts on this book, but overall just know I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four stars. Then the next draw landed me on a prompt that I have now replaced with viewer pick. If you're not familiar, I created a video where I asked for you to go and look at all of the books that I have on my TBR and leave me comments on what you feel like I need to read ASAP. And so for this prompt, I went and I selected a random comment from that video and the comment was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So I actually did just recently read that and finish that in March and I adored that a lot, especially Mbot. Oh, he was the best character in that book. If you know, you know. So I have satisfied that one as well. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book with yellow on the cover. I read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid, y'all know, is my queen. She's one of my favorite authors of all time. This is a book that is heavily featured around tennis, which I really enjoyed. And I gave this a four stars. I thought that this was a very solid book. Taylor Jenkins Reid books usually are. So this was definitely a strong reading experience. And then the very last draw of that game landed me in one of my safety zones. And for the safety zones, I'm allowing myself to pull an additional challenge prompt so I can ensure that I'm satisfying as many challenges for 2023 as possible because I have a lot of them going on. So the challenge prompt that I drew for that was to read a Jane Harper. And I believe in my March TBR, I said I was going to be reading The Exiles by Jane Harper, but I actually already had The Survivors on my shelf. This is actually one of her standalones. It's not part of her Aaron Falk detective series. And I wanted to go ahead and get this out of the way. This is what I am currently reading. So I will be finishing this up within the next day or two. And then I will move into Jar of Hearts and I will have officially satisfied my entire March TBR. But if I did have to take a punishment, I do have kings waiting for me and I could have skipped those all together anyway, but so far I do not need them. All right, everybody, you know the drill. Before we get into the actual gameplay, I have some challenges to pull, so I'm going to pull three today. Now, I will say that I'm using the Slayer Fest readathon to satisfy a lot of the prompts that are in here, or I'm doing my best to do that. Not all of them are going to work. So some of the prompts that I pull here today, I may already have plans to read coming up soon. So we are going to see. So let's start. This is a very stressful reading year, y'all. I got a lot going on. All right, let's see what we got. 
The Silent Sister. So this is by Diane Chamberlain. She is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors. This is actually a book that I don't currently have satisfying any of the Slayer Fest prompts. So this is another one that is getting added to my TBR. I might try to see if I can fit this in anywhere. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to see. All right. Ooh, When Breath Becomes Air. Okay, so this is actually a nonfiction story. The reason that I have this in here is because I, for one of my challenges, have to read a book that was published posthumously. So a book that was published after the author passed away. And that is the case with this. So this is a nonfiction. I'm not typically a nonfiction reader, but this sounds very beautiful and hard hitting. I believe if I remember correctly, it is about a doctor, possibly even an oncologist who himself gets cancer and eventually passes away from that cancer. And this is his memoir. And I wanted to go ahead and read this because it sounds like it's going to be just so incredibly touching and heartbreaking and it will also satisfy that challenge and lucky enough I'm pretty sure I have this satisfying Slayer Fest prompt so lucky there all right we're getting some interesting interesting pulls all right King of Crows by Libba Bray. Okay, that actually works because that is definitely one that I'm going to try to fit into Slayer Fest somewhere. So that works. All right, I think that's going to do it for the challenge prompts that I'm going to pull today. I feel comfortable only pulling three this month because I know that I'm going to satisfy more than that in April. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everybody, it is time to play April's round of the My Bad TBR game. So let's do draw number one. All right, so we got a seven. So this is one where I actually do have the ability to split the move between two pawns if I want to. And obviously I cannot do that because red only has one guy out on the playing field at this time. But I do also have the availability to double up on prompts with a seven. So whatever prompt I land on with this move, I am able to double up with another prompt later in this game if applicable. So let's go ahead and see what red guy gets on number seven. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beautiful book. All right, so my very first draw was the number seven in red, and I landed on the prompt to read a beautiful book. And for that, I'm going to be reading Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the second book in her Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. This is the Fairy Loot edition, and it is stunning. I mean, look at that, y'all. Look at those end pages. And then even the naked hardcover is stunning as well. And there's a reverse dust jacket, or at least art on the inside of the dust jacket. So like, here's the naked hardcover. Holy cow, it's just flipping stunning. And then we have some art on the inside of the dust jacket. How beautiful is that? So this definitely satisfies the prompt to read a beautiful book. If you are not familiar, this is a young adult fantasy series that is following our main character, Amelia. She and her twin sister, Vittoria, are witches, basically witches who are living among the human population, trying to avoid notice. But then one night, Vittoria misses supper and eventually Amelia finds her dead. And Amelia then sets out to find out who killed Vittoria and claim her vengeance. And she's even willing to do that if it means using dark magic. She kind of discovers that Victoria was into some things that she was not familiar with, including using dark magic. And she uses some of the stuff that she finds within Victoria's possession to summon someone to help her. And that ends up being Wrath, who is one of the wicked, one of the princes of hell. And it kind of goes from there. So I am definitely excited to continue and to see where this goes. All right, draw number two. All right, we got a six and a green. A six is a very straightforward movement. So let me flip the board and see what we get. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, book club pick. So that actually works out really well again. So far, the board is being very, very kind to me. All right, then I drew a number six and the color green, and that landed me on the prompt to read a book club pick. And this is a very fortunate prompt because this is something that I had already planned on reading in April, of course, as it's part of the book club that I'm a part of on Goodreads. And it's also a book that I'm using for Slayer Fest, and that is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. I've only ever read one Adrian Young. It was Fable, which is a young adult piratey fantasy, and I really enjoyed that. I don't think I will be continuing in that series just because I'm really moving away from YA overall, but I really enjoyed Adrian Young's writing style. And this feels like it's going to be very atmospheric. I'm kind of getting a little bit of Shea Earnshaw vibes from this and I've heard some really really amazing things. So it says, Emery Blackwood's life changed forever the night her best friend was found dead and the love of her life, August Salt, was accused of murdering her. Years later she is doing what her teenage self swore she never would, living a quiet existence on the misty remote shores of Sorsha Island and running the family's business, Blackwood's tea shop, herbal tonics, and tea leaf readings. But when the island, rooted in folklore and magic, begins to show signs of strange happenings, Emery knows that something is wrong. The morning she wakes to find that 
every single tree on Sorsha has turned color in a single night. August returns for the first time in 14 years and unearths the past that the town has tried desperately to forget. August knows he is not welcome on Sorsha, not after the night everything changed. As a fire raged on the Salt family orchard, Lily Morgan was found dead in the dark woods, shaking the bedrock of their tight-knit community and branding August a murderer. When he returns to bury his mother's ashes, he must confront the people who turned their backs on him and face the one wound from his past that he has never healed, Emery. The town has more than one reason to want August gone, and the emergence of hidden promises and deep betrayal spanning generations threaten to reveal the truth behind Lily's mysterious death once and for all. Okay, interesting. Is this, I wonder if it's told through August's perspective as well. So there's Emery. Oh, and August. Okay. All right. So I actually didn't know that. I thought that we would only be getting Emery's perspective, but we're getting August's perspective in here as well. And I am stoked for this one. I think that this is going to be beautiful and I really hope it's worth the hype. I'm very excited to get to this one. Draw number three. All right, we have another king, another resand king at that. I did check and I do still have the other two out and ready for whenever I need them. So this guy is just going to go sit along with them. I apparently am destined to just get all of the kings up front for any time I need saving from a punishment. So I'm going to go ahead and set the king aside and no book will be selected for it. And then for my third draw, I drew a king. And as y'all know, a king is basically a get out of jail free card. So I can basically hang on to that. And if one month should I not be able to complete my TBR, I'm able to forego a punishment if I want to, meaning I don't have have to move one of those books to the next month to read and I don't have to unhaul it either if I choose not to move it to the next month. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that to the side. I already have two additional kings waiting for me so now I have three. All right draw number four. All right, we got another six and this time blue and luckily we are on the right side of the board. Just go ahead and move. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is to read a book with green on the cover. All right, next I drew a number six, this time the color blue and I landed on the prompt to read a book with green on the cover. And for that, I'm going to be reading The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. This is actually a book that I'm reading for that same vlog that I read What Lies in the Woods for. So I definitely need to continue on with the reads for that vlog. I'm very excited to be getting to this. This was an anticipated read for 2023 and I'm hyped for it. I believe it's going to have a little bit of isolationist vibes, but that's not really what this is about. This is about a prospective writer who is invited to a very exclusive writing retreat at the estate of this very well-known feminist horror author. And when she gets to this retreat, there's a huge announcement being made that all of the writers there are going to be expected to start a novel from scratch. Like they can't continue any of the work that they have been working on. And the novel that is deemed the best at the end of the retreat is going to be offered like a six-figure life-changing publishing deal. And so naturally all of the writers there want this opportunity. And so our main character, she's going to buckle down and she's going to get it done. But then some really weird things starts happening at this retreat and one of the writers goes missing. And so I think we're going to be following our main character as she's trying to figure out what's happening, as she's trying to survive and things of that nature. And I am 100% here for it. I'm very excited to be adding this to my April TBR. Draw number five. Okay, another king. So last round, I don't know if you remember, but last round I drew two kings and this round I'm drawing two kings and now I have four kings. I don't know what is going on with all of the kings, but I swear this deck is shuffled really, really well. I guess that's what happens when you have like three decks of cards. You can get a bunch of the same number at any given point, but I'm still floored that twice now I've gotten two kings during a round of gameplay. I guess maybe that's the board being kind to me again. I don't know, but he's going to go to the side and sit along with all of his other little king friends. So there we go. All right, then my next draw was another king. I cannot believe that for two rounds of this game in a row, I have drawn two kings. I have no idea what is happening with all of these kings being drawn, but this is another one that's just going to be set aside for use at a later date. And naturally, no book is chosen for this one. And then the final draw. All right, so we got another jack and a jack is a skip. So if there's any prompt that I don't wanna deal with during this round of gameplay, I can just skip it. I do have another jack on the sidelines as well that I haven't used yet. So at this time, I now have two jacks and four kings just waiting for me, but I don't think I'm going to need to skip any of these prompts. So it looks like after this round, I'm only going to have three books to choose and that's going to be it for this one. And then my final draw was a jack and this is a skip, meaning at any point in the future, I can take a jack and skip a prompt that I don't wanna deal with. I'm not gonna be doing that for this round because everything that I've chosen for this TBR is basically something that I already kind of had planned to read in the near future anyway and I don't really feel the need to skip anything so I'm gonna hang on to that until I really really need it.
All right, y'all, that is it. That is my TBR for April. And like I said, I will be posting a video soon with all of the books that I plan to read for my Slayer Fest TBR. So we're about to get really, really ambitious for the next couple of months, y'all. And I'm excited to see if I can actually do it. I have a lot of big plans for my reading this year. I have a lot of challenges that I'm trying to satisfy. And I'm working very, very hard to not only satisfy those challenges, but also still ensure that I'm reading books that I want to read, as well as completing some series, because that is a big goal of mine for this year as well. So we've got a lot going on. We're going to see what I can do. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I've talked about today and what your thoughts are, I would love to know. Please also let me know what are some of the books on your April TBR. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and I have a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.